Hello, everybody. I just wanted to do a quick little video here to update you guys on the yoga intensive course that we are, I am going to be offering online. That registration should be up by this weekend, early next week at the latest. I'm still trying to work out all the kinks in the administration side of running a business, uh, partnering with Ashala, making sure we have everything we need that they need to run this course forward, push this course forward. It might be a little bit more than 400, which was my original uh, guesstimation looking at what we were going to do. But with all the processing fees that um, come with running courses, for example, running through mind body, running through credit card machines, all that kind of stuff, we might have to tack on a little bit more just to make sure that all of that is covered. I know it's frustrating. I actually, to be honest with you guys, MindBody is one of my least favorite software systems to use, but it's one of the only software systems that's available to yoga shalas to use for the business portion that also accommodate other countries as well. So for example, if you are from England and you want to take my course, we're going to have to run it through MindBody because it's technically an international purchase. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, the course is most likely going to start Sunday, October 2nd, and then four consecutive Sundays. So October 2nd will be the first Sunday and then three more Sundays after that. It will run from two o'clock in the afternoon to four o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. I picked this window of time because that is the best to accommodate as best as I can to people all around the world and people in other parts of the United States. It's not super early for those on the East Coast and, or, excuse me, it's not super early for those on the West Coast. And it still gives enough time for people in Europe who also want to pop in for the course. Once again, we are going to be focusing mostly on yoga philosophies because I'm not there to adjust you physically with the asana. We'll talk about the asana practice because the asana practice is important as a tool used to study yourself, but we will be mostly focused on the philosophy. You will be required to also purchase Sri Swami Satitananda's commentary on the yoga sutras. We are going to be going through the first and second pada of the yoga sutra in this course. We will also be talking about the chakra system. We are not going to be going through Eastern Body, Western Mind, but if that is a book you want to purchase on top of everything for your own self-study, go ahead and do so. But we will be discussing all the seven major chakras that run up the body, along with Shashumna, which is the energetic spine uh, pathway that runs up the spine, and the two other nadis that come through the nasal. Now, more importantly than the chakras, we are also going to be talking about the bandhas. The bandhas are what lock in the energy within the chakra system, and that is something you really work with within the asana practice. So we're really going to focus a lot on mola bandha, uriyanda bandha, and jalandhara bandha in their relationship to the chakras. If the chakras are healed, but the bandhas aren't strong, it doesn't me mean anything, right? Your chakras can be completely healed, but if you have no strength in the bandhas, energy is not going to flow. And so we're really going to look at that as well. We'll also be going through the Ayurvedic doshas. And this is for you to start to understand what your disposition is so that you know how to proceed forward with your own healing. I always suggest that you go see an Ayurvedic practitioner as well, because they will look in your eyes, your tongue, the ask you other questions, listen to your heart rate, all that kind of stuff that you can't do on a worksheet. But the worksheet we'll be doing is just a generalized practice for you to start to understand more about who you are, what your disposition is so that you know how to balance yourself. Along with this course, you're also going to get a PDF of a manual. So I'm putting together the manual right now that you'll be able to keep. You can print it off, take notes on it. That will kind of be your guide through the course and also something that you can refer back to once the course is over. You're also going to get a couple of videos of some posture work. I'll be doing the posture work on the videos, mainly Surya Namaskar A and Surya Namaskar B, which are the foundation of all asana work. That's just the minimal that we will be doing on this course, again, because I'm not there to adjust you. On top of this, you are going to get two sessions with Emmy for Reiki. This I've incorporated into this course. I've never incorporated Reiki into any courses before, but I'm doing it for this course um, just so you guys have a uh, better understanding of how energy flows because you can actually feel that when someone's doing Reiki on you. And of course, Emmy is available to do Reiki over Zoom so that you can start to tap more and become more grounded within your physical body so you understand that sensation of feeling. We also will be going 
through some Sanskrit, uh, we'll be looking at the count for Siri Namaskar A and Siri Namaskar B. Uh, that kind of stuff, looking at all those counts for Siri Namaskar A and Siri Namaskar B. We'll look at some of the Sanskrit words that are important for this practice because Sanskrit is a light language. It is a vibrationally high language. So 100% Sanskrit should be studied along with yoga because that is the language of yoga. Along with Sanskrit, I might include some simple Vedic chants within the manual. And depending on what you guys want to do within the course, if you want to go through those chants, we can. If not, they will be there in the manual for you to look up later on on your own. Just depends on what you would like to do, especially if you're new to yoga. Sometimes I think just learning the count to begin with is enough for the Sanskrit. And then as you start to acclimate more to the practice, then you can get more into the Vedic chanting. But again, I will let the class decide what they want to do when it comes to that. I also want to remind you guys, because I am getting still getting a lot of questions about this. I am not affiliated with the Yoga Alliance. Okay. I am not affiliated with any corporation that's going to grant, grant you permission to teach. Okay. No 200 hour course, nothing like that. In order for me to be an authorized teacher through KPJYI, I cannot be affiliated with the Yoga Alliance. That The teachers of India take this very seriously. Um, they are very, um, dist the Yoga Alliance is, in is enemy number one to the yoga teachers of India. They see teacher trainings as they're called as scams. Um, they believe, or according to my teacher, it's like they stole yoga. They stole it and they made it their own. And there's no way, there's absolutely no way you can learn to be a teacher in 200 hours. That's ridiculous. You can't learn to do anything in 200 hours. And so um, I, per, in my personal opinion, I think the Yoga Alliance is part of the controllers. They, they put that in to screw yoga up um, to make it something it's not. And so I just want to put that out there. Now, with that being said, I know there are really good teachers who do run teacher training programs, but it just generally speaking, if you would like to get into a proper yoga practice, you're not going to be doing anything affiliated with the Yoga Alliance. You're going to be looking for teachers like myself who have studied in India with Param Gurus. All right. Um, when we go to India, we're not there just for a certain amount of time. We're there for years. We go for years before we're actually granted permission to teach. You're not just given it. You have to be granted that permission. So it's a pretty serious thing. And so I cannot extend extra credit hours to you for this bullshit corporation called the yoga Alliance. All right. I'm just want to make that very, very clear. So if you're signing up for this course, because you think it's going to help you get more credit towards the yoga Alliance, you don't need to be signing up for this course. Cause I have nothing to do with the yoga Alliance. All right. Um, I have more respect for India and for my teachers in India to ever be involved in that. Okay. I know how upset my teacher gets. You have to remember, this is a part of the Indian culture. This is a part of their heritage. This is a part of their faith. And so for a corporation in the United States to come in and be like, thank you, we're taking this now. And we're going to be the holders and the keepers of who can teach or not is a slap across India's face. It really is. And so I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. Um, in my Ashtanga lineage that I teach, if you see somebody running an Ashtanga teacher training, that's a scam because Ashtanga teachers can't be a part of that. So somebody's scamming you and the amount of money you're going to pay for that anyway could send you to India multiple times. So I just want you guys to be super, super, super aware of that. I really... Um, Parampara is the system in which India is taught, which yoga is taught, which we will talk about in the course, what Parampara is. You do not get Parampara through the Yoga Alliance, okay? And this is what I was saying when you're looking for teachers. When you look for a teacher yourself, you want to see what their resume looks like. Who is their teacher? That's how you find a good teacher. If they just say they went through a, tra a training course and that's it, then they're not a yoga teacher, right? They're teaching some yoga size class, some jazzer size with some yoga poses. They're not a yoga teacher. They have to have an actual teacher, an actual lineage that they are accountable to. That's when you know it's a valuable, if it, it, it's valuable or not, if that makes sense. And so I just want to put that out there. Do not sign up for this course if you think that I can get you in with some bullshit teacher training program through the Yoga Alliance. Okay. That's not what this is about. All right. Also, once again, once you sign up for this course and we start the course, we are strictly going to be talking about yoga, shadow work, and everything that encompasses this type of 
course. Okay. No, we're not going to be talking about any of the truth or stuff. We're not going to be talking about twin flames. We're not going to be talking about the missing books of the Bible, nothing like that. We are strictly going to be focused on you learning yoga, you learning the yoga philosophy, you learning how to navigate this world. I've, I have set this course up different from the courses I teach here in Atlanta. I've set this course up to be able to hopefully give you enough information so that once you're finished with the course, you have enough knowledge to go out there and find a proper teacher. You know what you're looking for because knowledge is power and knowledge protects. Okay. So that is my goal with this course. I'm not going to be uh, prepping you to, to walk into a Mysore room. If you want to follow the Ashtanga lineage after this course is over, I'll be more than happy, happy to help you find a Mysore uh, studio or shala in your area. Whether you choose Iyengar, Sivananda, whatever form of yoga you choose after this, hopefully this course will give you that information so you can pick for yourself what you want to follow and you don't get fooled by scams or any type of yoga cults because within every religion or spiritual practice there are cults so this is going to help you have that sovereignty so that you can make wise decisions and i'm super 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 excited about it you will have homework with this course I, i'm calling it a, an intensive that's what we call things in ashtanga we call them intensives because they're intense it's i'm going to ask that you actually do some sort of practice during the week whether that's the sun salutations I send you or some other examples I give you, you're going to have to be journaling. You're going to have to be working through the count, everything like that. So, so I, I really only want people who are serious about working with themselves to work to sign up for this course. Another thing I want to talk about when I uh, posted the hips video, I had a couple of people comment that they didn't think they can do this because X, Y, and Z. And I want to stop you right there. Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. All right. I have worked with people with hip replacement. I have worked with people who have amputated limbs. I have worked with people who have cancer and they can, and they've done it. You can do it too. This is the mind control that the controllers have put on us to make us think that our body is something that's out of our control. To make us think that anything that happens to us, any sickness is something that just, oh, well, this is what happened. That's not true at all. That is absolutely not true. The body is the GPS system and no human body is perfect. Everybody has something that they have to go through. I have practiced through a broken sacrum. I have multiple herniated discs right now, but I don't feel pain because I work on my practice every day. And I'll tell you guys a little story, something I can't believe. I don't think I've ever told this story um, and I can't believe I have it, but I guess it's just so distant for me that I just don't even think about it. When I was 17 years old, I had back surgery when I was 17. Uh, my high school, my whole teenage years were just one cluster fuck of sickness and surgery after another. And after my surgery was over, the um, doctor came into the room and he was like, you know, everything looks really good now. You're good to go and start your recovery. And I remember him saying laughingly that the two things I would never be able to do in my life would be golf and yoga. Now, yoga had just started to make its way into the Southeast at this time. Not many people knew much about yoga. My perception of yoga at 17 years old was that it was something that a bunch of old people did and they just were breathing. That's all I knew about yoga. And the doctor kind of laughed, oh, she'll never play golf and she'll never do yoga because of her back. Well, fast forward 22 years later, and I'm the only female authorized in the state of Georgia to teach this particular form of yoga. So that just goes to show you, when I first started practicing yoga, I could barely touch my toes because my back was tight because of surgery. Now I can easily get my foot behind my head. Now I can catch my ankles in a back bend. What happened? I worked at it. I worked at it. I learned. I learned that the issue I had with my spine wasn't just something that, you know, happened. Oh, well, it happened. The issue that happened with my spine had to do with my energetic body. It was a wound. And of course, at that point, as many people still are today, they think that as something that surgery should fix. You know, it's just something short surgery should fix instead of going, wait a minute, that's my, my Moladara. And the minute you started having that, that, those back issues was when your father left. So let's go to therapy. Let's work through that abandonment issue. And then my back would have of course corrected itself, right? That's what the human body does. So if you had a hip replacement surgery, if you've had back surgery, if you've had shoulder surgery, it's not just something that's happened to you. 
It's something that's showing you where there's a wound, an emotional wound. And coming into the yoga room, working through the yoga practice is one of the tools that's given to us to work through that, to rebalance ourselves. Your body is the most amazing tool that you have ever been given. It's beautiful. Your beautiful body is so much smarter than your mind. And your beautiful body is going to start to show you where there's imbalances within you. And that, that's true for everyone. That's why we chose to have a body. You know, in the yoga philosophy, the body is the expression of the soul. So the soul is the Shiva, the body is the Shakti. And so the body being that Shakti is going to be that GPS system to show you where there's imbalances, where there's attachments, where there's issues that's distracting you from your alignment with God. And so if you're sitting there saying, oh, I can't do yoga because I have an amputated leg or I have hip issues or I have, you know, back surgery, then you're falling into the bullshit of the matrix. And in, in yoga, you know, you're not going to come to a yoga class and just put your legs behind your head. That's not going to happen. I've, I've said it so many times. Yoga has nothing to do with flexibility. The tool the, the asanas are just tools. That's all they are. It doesn't matter how far you can fold. I don't care how far you can fold. It doesn't matter. As long as you're feeling a sensation, as long as you're feeling some, some type of a friction and a, and a release, then that's how far you fold. And I hope that makes sense. Don't, do not, do not compare your chapter one to my chapter 10. I've been doing this for 15 effing years, six days a week for 15 years. Of course, I can put my leg behind my head. Of course, I can do a handstand. Of course, I can do things that you can't do right now. Of course, I can't. I've been doing it for 15 years for six days a week. My body is trained to do that now. My body, I've gone through the dark night of the soul. I've gone through those times where things were painful. I've gone through the opening and the releasing. Do not compare your chapter one to my chapter 10. Meet yourself where you are. I had to start at chapter one, too. Nobody is born doing this. We all had to start somewhere. When I was in college, I started run after my back surgery, I started running again. I was a long distance runner when I was in high school. I ran cross country. And when I was in college, I had to take like this elective class, right? This anyway. And the only thing left was yoga. And so I signed up for this yoga class, thought, whatever, I'll just do it. And the teacher was kind of weird. But I remember after the class was over, feeling really relaxed, feeling really, really good. And so I went and I got, don't laugh, I went and I got Jerry Hollowell from the Spice Girls. She had a VHS, a video of her doing yoga. Because course this was before dvds this was when you went and bought videos and so i went and got Je jerry hollowell's from the spice girls vh vhs yoga practice because i felt so good doing it and i didn't know any i didn't even know anything about yoga i had no idea anything about the yoga world but i thought i feel so good i'm going to incorporate this into my week like a couple times a week i'll just do this video just to stretch myself out you know from all the all the running i'm doing well, over time, what started to happen is I started to have such profound experiences open, opening my body that I shifted more into yoga and, and, and moved myself further out of running. And then, of course, there's other parts of the story. But to make a long story short, I ended up in India and dedicating my life to this practice. And so I want you, that's my chapter one. My chapter one was not knowing anything about yoga. So I got a VHS from the Spice Girls because that's the person I knew was the Spice Girls, not a yoga teacher at like 19, 20 years old. All right. And now at 39 years old, I am a student of a Param guru of India through the Ashtanga lineage. Okay. So there, there were obviously many steps between that Jerry Hollowell VHS video and where I am now. But just so you guys understand, that was my chapter one. And as I told you guys, I couldn't touch my toes. I could not get to my toes. Now I can get my leg behind my head because I just kept at it. I kept at it. And I, and I was okay with being the student. All right. That's another thing you have to understand when you walk into a practice like yoga or any other spiritual discipline, whether it's Tai Chi, Reiki, whatever it is, you have to be humble enough to be the student. You're not a gymnast. You're not a performer for Cirque du Soleil. You're a yoga student. 
my teacher came a few years back. He came to Miami from India and I went down to Miami to, to, to be there with my teacher and do the whole thing in Miami. And he was giving this conference because he gives conferences and he was making fun of us because he was like, all you guys do, you just, you just put, you put videos and pictures of you doing handstands on Instagram. And he sat there and he looked at us and he said, have you seen Cirque du Soleil? I've seen it eight times. They do it better. You are a yoga student. They do it better. Stop it. Basically, stop it. Stop trying to use the yoga asana to validate yourself. Right? The only time I hate taking asana shots. The only time I take asana, asana shots, posture shots, is for advertisement purposes. As I said on the hips video, I normally practice alone because I don't, it's very sacred to me. It's very, it's not about the performance. The cleaner my practice becomes, it shows me how much control I have in my bundas right? When something is wobbly, when something's not coming together, right? When it's looking kind of wonky, that's when I know I have something there that I need to work on. Those places where you're tight, those places where you're weak, that's where it's interesting. You know, my teacher, David Grieg up in Philadelphia, when um, I would go up there to practice with him, you know, he would have these young girls, you know, that were gymnasts or cheerleaders at one, once upon a time in their life. And they would come into the shala. And it was relatively no problem for them. And so he would just kind of give them the next posture, whatever, no excitement. But when like a 60 year old man would come into the shala who was a little bit overweight and really tight, David would get excited because now we have something to work with where there's resistance, where there's weakness, where, where there's that hip replacement, where there's that amputation where there's that surgery, that's where we have things to work with. We have something to work with. And that's the tool of yoga. That resistance. Patanjali talks about this in the sutras. You know, for me, I've, I've said before, I was pretty athletic. So when I got to Ashtanga Yoga and I, I learned the primary series pretty relatively quickly, didn't have a lot of hiccups in the primary series. But when I got to second series, that's where things started to get really challenging because it was really deep back bending. It was triggering a lot of that wound I had in my back, a lot of leg behind the head stuff. Well, Patanjali makes it very clear when things are easy for us, our mind is not there, right? So when I'm doing a practice, like if I'm doing primary series, I'm thinking about the laundry. I'm thinking about my research. I'm thinking about some boy. I don't know. I'm thinking about, I'm not, I'm not in my, in my, I'm not presently in my practice. But when I get to second series, third series, because it's so complicated for me, because there is resistance, because there is weakness, because there are wounds that are being highlighted in these series, I am presently on my mat. I'm not thinking about anything else but being there on my mat with this challenge. So if you are coming to this, this practice with a resistance, with a herniated disc, with an amputated leg, with shoulder surgery, then you're coming to this practice lucky because you already have something to work with. There's already information for you to start to dive into. So stop seeing yourself as coming into a yoga class to perform. You're not a gymnast. You're not in Cirque du Soleil. You're a yoga student. And the value you have as a yoga student doesn't matter how beautiful your practice is at all. It just matters how much work you put into it. At Ashtanga Yoga Atlanta, there's a student who has several palsy. He has to use one hand to pull the other one up to do a sun salutation. He's never going to finish primary series. But in my opinion, he's the most advanced student in that class. Because, because he comes into that class every single day with a good attitude. He works hard. And he's coming into the class with obstacles that most people don't have. And he's working through them because that's all they're supposed to be. Just, it's like Ganesh. Ganesh is the uh, deity. Um, he, he's the remover of obstacles, but he's also the bringer of obstacles. So if you have had back surgery, if you have had hip replacement, Ganesh brought that obstacle for you for a reason. God gave you that obstacle for a reason because there's something you need to learn from that. And you're not going to learn from that by just sitting around on your sofa, eating popcorn, watching TV going, saying, oh, I can't do it because I've had this. No, then that obstacle is going to follow you into the next life too. It's always going to be there until you actually sit down and work through it. So why not take the opportunity to actually work 
through it. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to have to go up against your preconceived notions of your mind. But I promise you it'll be beneficial. All right. I hope that answers some questions and con some concerns. We'll, uh, again, we'll get deeper into this in the course. When you take on a spiritual practice from the East, you're going to have to rewire your brain to rethink everything. You're going to have to unlearn everything and relearn everything again. And it is such a liberating path to be on. Your body is amazing. Warts and all. It's there to teach you and to show you things. All right. Okay, guys, once again, hopefully that registration will be up by this weekend. Again, we're looking at the start date being August 2nd. I think I'm going to open it up to 15 spots. If we book out and you can't get a spot, then we'll just continually keep doing this course, which is fine for me because I am going to be traveling a lot coming up. And so I can do this course on the road as well. So um, if you miss your chance to do this course, don't worry, we'll do it again right after the first course. So, all right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.